Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Mediocre Mama. It's Ruth here, I hope you are doing well. So in today's video, I am just doing a quick pregnancy update. I'm currently 35 weeks pregnant with my third baby. I'm gonna be 36 weeks in just a couple of days. So I really am at the final few weeks. <laughs> um, so yeah, before I dive into this update, if you're new to my channel and you would like to follow the final few weeks of my pregnancy and perhaps my birth might appear on this channel, we'll see how it goes, um, then please do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I would love to see you on the rest of my journey. <laughs> so at 35 weeks, baby is apparently the size of a honeydew melon definitely feeling like a big melon um this bump is getting so heavy and really tiring um just going up and down the stairs or getting off the sofa even getting out the bed at night when i need a wee it is so hard to like push yourself up and especially when you you can't really use your stomach muscles or anything like that so trying to find ways to kind of push yourself to kind of get out the bed is just so much effort. But I'm now having really strong movements. I know I was having a lot of movement anyway, but they're now really, really strong um, in terms of kind of starting to feel particular body parts. I'm not quite sure what they are. I've always got this kind of high um, bump on, on a particular side and I feel like it might be the knees because then to the side I feel like I've got a little foot um, and she's really very strong and sometimes I'm like ow which I've never had before in pregnancy I've never had particular movements that hurt but she's really quite vigorous with her movements really strong and yeah sometimes really sore and she moves throughout most of the day. Obviously she loves it when I've had something to eat or something to drink, that's some extra wriggliness. Um, and at night she doesn't stop until I go to sleep, um, which sometimes can be midnight. So um, yeah, it, it's really very strong movement, which is great, it's really reassuring, but uh, yeah, it can be painful at times. So along with the growing bump it really kind of makes my ribs hurt up here um i guess just where the bump is growing and expanding so if i'm in a particular sitting position or lying position it can hurt um, now at night i am using a pregnancy cushion to kind of put between my knees um i find it quite difficult to get comfortable with the pillow kind of at the top end of me I don't know whether to kind of put my arm under it or to lay on top of it, but my ribs start to kind of hurt in the night a little bit if I'm not using the pregnancy pillow in, in the best possible way. And also if my pregnancy pillow kind of falls or comes out from between my knees at any point, then I do feel the pain in my hips. I wake up with a kind of a like an ache, so I have to make sure that that cushion is really well and truly really wedged between my knees to keep my kind of leg elevated. Otherwise, I just end up with a really sore hip. I'm also really feeling it in my pubic bone, um, just kind of that pressure of baby kind of um, now kind of bearing down, I guess, and, and the extra weight. So especially first thing in the morning, and you've been laying down all day and then you stand up in the morning, then you really kind of feel that pressure and that kind of slight ache on the pubic bone. Um, so yeah, really kind of getting to that final stage of just all these kind of aches and pains and really running out of space. And my tummy is quite tight as well. So I can really see baby struggling for like space, which is probably why it's hurting me a little bit. But um, yeah, apart from that, I'm feeling okay. Definitely starting to struggle with the, the, the kind of tiredness and not so much being tired, but the effort to do things and carrying that extra weight around, like I said. So, you know, when I'm doing things for my other two children, I just find myself out of breath a lot. Bending over to pick things up is really hard. So just kind of getting to that end of pregnancy stage. And even like I, I took the dog for a walk 
and I just felt like I really can't walk that far anymore. It's getting really difficult and I'm getting really kind of out of breath. But it is my final week of work this week. Yes. Um, I love my job, don't get me wrong. But I just think because we've been in lockdown for a whole year and working from home for a whole year um, with the kids here, it's been really intense. And now my son is back to school. I'm just looking forward to, to finishing work now and being able to focus on my pregnancy. And I've still got my two year old to look after, but I'll be able to kind of start getting things done and doing some proper nesting around the house and to start kind of cleaning and things like that. Now at 36 weeks, I'm supposed to have the midwife come to my house to do a risk assessment for, for my home birth, but I haven't heard from my midwife about this appointment. So I need to make sure I, I send her a text or try and get in touch with her to try and book that appointment in because yeah, I'm 36 weeks this week and I haven't heard from her. And I think she needs to come and do this risk assessment. I think this baby will be early. My other two were born at 39 weeks. So if I can get to 39 weeks, that would be great. But I just feel like where I've had the two other children, maybe it's just a feeling or a sensation, but I just don't know how much longer my body will physically be able to hold this baby in. <laughs> now, also what I wanted to mention in this video is today I have been out and bought Majul, is it Majul? Majul dates. Now, my midwife from my last pregnancy told me about these. These dates are amazing for preparing your cervix, um, just to prepare your body for labour. How, you may wonder. They apparently increase cervical ripening and they did a study on a group of pregnant women and for the women that were taking the dates so you'd eat about five or six a day and you can start kind of three weeks before your due date three or four weeks and in this study the women that were eating the dates 96 percent of them went into spontaneous labor whereas only 79% of women who didn't eat the dates went into spontaneous labour. So it gives you a higher chance of a spontaneous labour, less chance of going over the 40 week mark or the 41 week mark. They also found that women upon their admission to hospital uh, were further along in their dilation in that first latent stage of um, labour. So it should speed up that first part of labour and help your cervix to dilate. And they also found that that first part of labour was a lot shorter had you been eating the dates. So within that study, the women that had been eating the dates, their first part of labour on average was about 8.5 hours. And those that didn't eat the dates, their first part of labour was 15 hours. So quite a big difference. They also found within the study that there was a reduced need for induction. So there seems to be quite a lot of positive things from taking these dates. I am all for being on time with Labour Day, with due day, being on time, having a quicker first part of labour and kind of just like dilating a bit quicker. Now, I ate these last time and I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it worked. I'm going to do it again, but my labour was definitely quicker and especially for the last, I, mean, I know it says the first part of labour is meant to be quicker, but um, I got to six centimetres and my midwife checked me and she said, you're six centimetres, but I really believe that baby will be here in 15 minutes. And I didn't believe it at all. But honestly, I went from six centimetres to baby being born within 15 minutes. Now, Maybe because it was second birth, maybe because the dates helped, I don't know. But I am going to give it a go again and I'm going to start eating these. Um, so maybe like four or five of these a day and just start eating them over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully it will help in labour um, to speed everything up and make sure that baby comes on time. I think probably the other alternative that other women do which is similar, is the raspberry leaf tea, the raspberry leaf tea in the capsules, um, which I've never tried before. Um, I think I would much prefer 
to have these dates. They kind of look a bit weird and gross. However, last time I really enjoyed them because they just they just taste like toffee. That's all I can compare it to, like a toffee caramel taste. So they're quite nice and I quite enjoyed them. So I'm happy to give it another go. <laughs> but that is literally all I have in terms of an update for you this week. I'm going to reach out to my midwife, as I said, find out if I'm going to have that appointment here at my house to do the risk assessment and check baby and all that kind of thing. Um, I will be picking up my birthing pool next week. So my midwife from my last pregnancy is lending me a pool, which I'm really, really grateful for. So I'm going to go and pick that up because next week I'll be 37 weeks and much closer. So I just want to have everything here ready just in case I go into any early labour. Um, but yeah, that's me for this week. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and checking out this update and hopefully I will see you on my next video. As I said, please don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate all your support so much and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.